Thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. We head now to another a crucial discussion. Now, prices of food items are skyrocketing daily, leaving the average Nigerian struggling to meet up in the face of rising inflation. Now, every trip to the market for the average Nigerian rings in the level of price increase for foodstuff and other commodities, with prices soaring before beyond the reach of the common man, many laments that household uh, income and salaries are yet to reflect the changes to meet up with feeding costs. Now, some months ago, a, a painter of Gary went for about 800 naira, but now it's been sold uh, for between 1,000 to 1,200 naira, and that's depending on the market you visit here in Lagos. A painter of rice also is now sold for between 2,800 to 3,000 while a bag of foreign rice goes for more than 30,000 naira. And the same goes for other cities across the country. Nigeria's inflation rose in June to its highest level in more than five years, fueled by rising prices of food and the high cost of diesel. The rise in the food index was caused by an increase in prices of bread and cereals, as well as food products, potatoes, yam, and other tubers. Uh, just as, uh, you know, meat, fish, oil and fat and uh, wine were also not uh, left out in this rising prices. Let's talk now with the CEO of Finance with Mukta, Mukta Mohammed. He joins us via Zoom to discuss this. Good to see you again, uh, Mukta Mohammed. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Right, so uh, we were just talking a moment ago about you know, new yam and now you know, available, but then it has to do with uh, how much you can spend to get this um, a very popular and tasty commodity. Of course, the same goes for other you know, essential uh, food items in the market. What do you make of um, speculations as to hope in sight for cheaper food prices? Uh, um, if you talk about hope in sight for cheaper food prices, uh, I wonder where that hope is coming from. Um, I, I, I still think um, we got playing with a lot of things. We have inflation, like you said, and inflation are driven by three different variables. Um, cost of production, which in terms of food item will be that of transportation from these, the marketplace, you talk about um, also microeconomy um, inflation, which has to do with microeconomic policies, both the micro, both the physical and the monetary policies. And also then you talk about um, economic induced inflation, which has to do with demand and supply. All these are playing out at, at this time. And so it's difficult for you to see that there's any hope inside. And uh, not to forget that the insecurity also is uh, affecting farmers from moving their Product from the from from their base to the market because of fear of a um, bandit or kidnappers or or terrorists. So it is not um, something that we we go go back any soon. Um, even when we had those stability, it's always a challenge for us to maintain price price and um, stability. So I I, I think um, anybody that is having that hope assistance now, especially in the area of food product. I mean food security should um, think twice. All right, uh, uh, Mukhtar, the, the point beyond or beside the price rising, the volatility is so, is so high that you, you can't predict the, the difference between last week and this week. You can see it and feel it in the prices of uh, food. Even between, uh, 20, within 24 hours, the prices of things could change. What is responsible for this? volatility where you, you were in the market two days ago to buy beans or buy Gary and then you go just two days after and then the price is not the same. Um, that has to do with um, demand and supply. Um, you know, these uh, most Nigerians also are becoming very scared. So they know that they, these goods will go up the following day or the following week. So everybody's rushing to the market to see how much can he keep at home before the price goes up. So that's what we say. That's about demand and supply that is bringing those things because um, it's not that they bring in new product the following day, but I think demand and supply is basically what is happening there. And then also you mustn't forget the fear of insecurity because uh, people are not sure that the farmers are going to be able to bring those product the following day to the market. So everybody is taking precautious level against that. Basically, that's the cause. Uh, 
Please, uh, I don't know whether you heard uh, or you read about the Minister of Agriculture uh, intervening on the issue of banditry and, uh, and the cost of uh, uh, food items. He said that that um, the, by the issue of banditry and cost of food item, have, uh, that issue has been taken care of because they provided um, securities for, for the uh, farmers uh, on their routes to their farms and back and so on. Uh, uh, what would you respond to, to that kind of uh, claim? I think it's not true. I mean, I don't think it's true. The government has to give us fact that you are you sending um, a military personnel of, um, um, all through the country? You know that, um, again, there's a farmer handsman crisis that has been happening in places like um, Benue State, which is the food basket, basket of the nation. If you remember the, the governor of Benue State just some weeks ago, trying to say that it's going to buy AK-47 for his people. So if the government is really doing what they ought to do, why would the government be thinking like they're setting up a private security firm for the state and saying that it's going to provide arms for them? Zamfara State is totally unaccessible at the moment. Uh, you, you and I know that Katsina State also. And then when you talk about uh, where we get greens, tomatoes, um, other uh, perishable variables, they come from that place. So. I don't think what the, the government is saying is true. Maybe they are doing that in a, in, in Bruno State, where they, that started. Remember the farmers that were killed some time ago, and the government came out to say that um, those farmers did not inform them that they were going to farm. If they informed them, they would have provided security for them. So maybe he's trying to tell us now in Bruno State, we are beginning to provide security for them to go to the farm. Outside of that, I don't see any states that have um, benefited from that. All we need to do is, is get to hear the body language of the state governors. And you know the danger that the farmers are facing every day. Can you assess uh, to what extent, to what extent, uh, this uh, rise in banditry has actually affected the cost of food? Because we want to know what are the uh, levels of effect of each of these forces. You talked about demand and supply, transportation, um, you know, the issue of scarcity and stuff and stuff like that. Banditry itself hasn't been has anybody has anybody done a fair assessment of his, his own quality the quality of his impact on the cost of food. When um when you when you when you, when you talk about quality of his impact, you just need to go to the rural area and see that a lot of them that were even gained their living by farming have also uh, withdrawn from that. And uh, um, I mean they are not uh, farming again, so that brings them. The level of poverty in the rural area is getting high. If you look at the, um, the report from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, you realize that inflation is even getting high in the rural area, and it's also in the area of food, and that has never been things like that. Things like that don't normally happen, especially in the rural area. One thing they pride themselves of is that they could have food to eat, maybe even if they don't have cash, but at the moment, none of those things are existing. So that's you bringing the level of hunger, and that is also impacting to the level of poverty in the land. Remember that in the United States, the United Nations report also have proven Nigeria as driving into poverty. We have the highest number of poor, poor people in the world as, at the moment. That is one uh, uh, level that you, 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 you can also look at um, 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 what the cost of banditry also have, have been to the nation. Then in terms of food security, we, our reserves, we are not beginning to have green reserves that are, 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 we don't think seems to have that any longer because um, the government is not even, we have not been able to even feed ourselves to a place of, of having, a, uh, um, having a storage to store some of our grains. So you remember when also we had crisis, uh, even in the uh, IDP account, government have not been able to provide um, some of these simple things that normally they would just go to the storage where they reserve and provide to it. So when you want to quantify that in terms of um, loss of lives, you, you, you say that, oh, if, if Cardinal State alone have lost over 1,000 people, in terms of banditry, you could remember. You, you should just try to see what happened in the in the in the rural area. So the cost of banditry is both human and uh, capital. And uh, but again, with the capital side, because of lack of data, uh, we've not been able to assess that yet. In addition to the peculiar factors that um, you've you've <coughs> cited, uh, 
pervading, you know, food security or, you know, challenging food security generally in Nigeria. Of course, the Nigerian government is also talking about uh, global factors that have also impacted the food situation uh, here at home. Uh, but how do you weigh these, um, these, would you call them excuses? How do you weigh them against what's also been called the slow government's uh, response in terms of policy uh, in ameliorating the situation? Well, it's a global crisis, and definitely, I mean, all over the world, we've seen price of good price going off to high time high. high. I mean, uh, if you watch and listen to the Food and Agriculture Organization report, it said for, for over um, two decades, they have had the highest in terms of food price the world have ever experienced. And like you said, um, the Russia and Ukraine crisis, how does that affect Nigeria? It definitely is affecting us, especially in the area of wheat. And that's why you are seeing that the cost of bread uh, and such is going up. Now, the challenge with Nigeria is that we have to grapple with that in the range of the crisis that is going on in Ukraine. And also, we are also grappling with the challenge of FX, which is um, the, 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 the foreign uh, exchange, as well as the, the, the green by that, the Naira. I mean, the dollar would not been able to provide that again for importation of goods. And so some of these um, companies or some of these people that import or this product has to sort for this fund in the parallel market. And as sourcing for that fund in the parallel market, they are getting it at a higher rate. Some of them are getting it at 660, some of them are getting it at 670, some of them are even getting it at 730. And so they will transfer that um, that cost to the consumer also. And that's what we talk about cost inflation. In terms of policies, I think the government has not been able to come up with with with, with um with a with with a measure to cook this at the moment. They've tried administrative policy, they've tried monetary policies. Uh, but again, monetary policy, administrative policies cannot work if supplies are not being met. And so what the government is talking about is being able to meet demand and supply. And in this, in, in terms of when you look at the global trend, then you're looking at demand of FX into the economy and also outward of FX or attracting FX into your economy. So that is a major, major challenge. And again, the government is not looking at taking a bite at the revenue to bring down cost of some of these goods. And when I mean taking a bite at the revenue, it's looking at um, um, value added tax, it's also looking at um, the taxing of some of this um, product that comes from outside the shore of Nigeria and begin to think of how can we take a bite of our revenue by reducing value added tax. That's what everybody's doing all over the world, try to make I mean, get the suffering of his people down. We're talking about uh, petroleum. Tax in some other developed nations have been wiped off for now, have been suspended for now, depending what things will get up to normal. So um, Nigerian government need to begin to look inwardly and see how they can take a bite of their revenue. And of course, it's difficult for them with the mounting debt they are owing. So it, it's, it's, it's a dear situation that we are at the moment. Mm. All right. Uh, well, uh, one would say that the insufficiency of food uh, leads to all of this volatility one way or the other. But let's talk about the issue of... Uh, uh, Agri agriculture research institutes and universities of agriculture. We have all of those in different parts of the country. What role do they play in 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 creating uh, uh, new farming or modern farming systems where they are incorporating farmers in wherever they find themselves and and ensuring that we have a stable food processing or agricultural processing uh, system? What role? And you just need to look at the role and look at the universities and know that the students have been home for a while. And uh, we've not paid attention to aggregate extension or research for a very, very long time. I mean, I, I, I think right from the 90s, we started losing our focus in terms of that. Uh, when you look at all the research institutes in Nigeria, they are almost in a, almost in, in a state of, uh, of, 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 of non, um, non, no, they've not been doing any research for it a very, very long time. Uh, you just need to go to some of them and see. And again, that is what the CBN is trying to do, trying to begin to encourage research in all these sectors by trying to provide and form directly to, to some of these research institutes, especially those that have to do with um, household items like um, like uh, rice also and, uh, and also um, um, wheat. But, and it, it has not worked here because this, this um, research institutes have been in this, in, 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 in just like being there for a very long time without any activities going on there. So I think that is the area of research. And that is why if you ask the academic staff, you know, if you just ask, they'll say those are the main reasons why they are 
they are still on strike because the government is not able to meet them, especially in the area of research grant for them to do more research and, and, and then see how we can develop economically. In the, in the, they will tell you about the agricultural side, they will tell you about other sites. I think um, we have not paid so much attention to research. But again, you must you must realize what I normally say. Is he that is not more hungry, he that is being fed, that will begin to think of research. The government is thinking to meet um, the, 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 I mean, the necessary needs of Nigerians, and they've not been able to meet that. And so they are not even getting, uh, putting fun into research. Uh, and again, since this uh, uh, administration came to power, there have been a lot of uh, drawback in the area of research because of lack of funds. CEO of Finance with Mukta, Mukta Mohammed, thank you very much for your contributions on TVC Breakfast. Good morning.